Carpal tunnel syndrome is the topic for uh, this video. Well, what is carpal tunnel? What is the carpal tunnel? There's a syndrome involved, but what is the carpal tunnel? Well, here we have a very nice diagram of the hand. And this is the palm side of the hand, so this is representing the right hand. What they've done is they've taken a cross section, and they've shown it to you here. And this is the carpal tunnel. Now, if you can see, it's basically a collection of a few things. The first thing, of course, is uh, just the sheath that sort of covers it. But that's not really what uh, these uh, arrows are pointing to. What they're pointing to are the tendons that are part of the wrist, help you flex your wrist. And right here, median nerve. This is by far the most important aspect of this presentation, this median nerve. Now what's happening in carpal tunnel syndrome? Well in the syndrome this median nerve is being compressed. Okay? It's being compressed. And when that happens you develop pain and tingling and paresthesia and all those symptoms that I'll talk about. One thing I want to point out to you is take a look at this diagram here and uh, right here you know this is that median nerve in yellow now look at where it actually innervates the hand do you see where it's branching out I it's branched out to the thumb branched out to that first finger second finger and half of this fourth finger do you notice how it's only covered the that uh, one half of it basically so what they describe is this classic three and a half finger distribution uh, of uh, pain and paresthesia and the reason is obvious because the median nerve innervates the, those three and a half fingers so that's a little anatomical diagram describing the carpal tunnel and the median nerve all right well let's erase all this and get started okay well first of all just a little bit of history as to why why does this happen I mean we'll talk about symptoms but why does this happen well I want you to remember these things it can happen because of some other condition so a normal person you know develops these conditions and there it's not guaranteed that they will get uh, carpal tunnel syndrome but these medical conditions are associated with somebody developing carpal tunnel syndrome so I want you to remember these because these will be on the licensing exams. And I'll talk briefly about each of these, very briefly, because this presentation is not about uh, these uh, diseases. It's about carpal tunnel syndrome. All right, so rheumatoid arthritis um, basically is a form of arthritis, and that is associated with carpal tunnel syndrome because of the inflammation involved in the, in the uh, joints uh, that are in the wrist. Diabetes mellitus is another condition that is associated with uh, carpal tunnel syndrome, as is hypothyroidism. Acromegaly, do you remember what that is? That is when somebody has gigantism, they have very high got levels of growth hormone and other hormones that stimulate the abnormal growth, very tall people. Uh, Pregnancy-induced edema is a very important one to remember because the edema, the swelling, can eventually cause compression, the swelling in the wrist can cause compression of that median nerve. And the work related is very commonly tested that a lot of jobs that involve a lot of repetitive flexion and extension can eventually contribute to this type of carpal tunnel compression. So remember those. Don't forget, I drew two arrows here to acromegaly for a reason that I'll explain a little later on. Okay, symptoms. Well, we talked a little bit about this. Basically, you're gonna have tingling and numbness this uh, also known as paresthesia um, in that um, in in the wrist and in the hand in that distribution that famous three and a half finger distribution that I illustrated with that anatomical diagram and um, oftentimes the patient can wake at night uh, with the burning and aching pain uh, in that uh, in that wrist if it's very severe the patient can uh, uh, develop something called thenar atrophy which involves basically the 
the what happens is the it becomes very difficult to do any opposition or abduction of the thumb uh, on that hand um, but that's only in severe cases so somebody presents with these symptoms how do you diagnose it well the diagnosis involves this history but there's two uh, very very easy to do physical exam tests there's this one right here and this is called the Tinel's and basically what it involves is you're tapping that area you can you can tap it with your finger or in this case in this diagram this uh, this hammer you know those hammers they test the reflex re reflex hammer that they test the reflexes with and you tap that uh, area that the median nerve is located and it reproduces the tingling and uh, paresthesia the other test is this one and this one is called the Phelan Phelan test and just like the diagram shows you ask the person to flex their wrists and hold it hold it for 30 seconds 45 seconds and it will reproduce that uh, pain and tingling and those are the two physical exam tests that are done to diagnose carpal tunnel and if this is positive and this is positive well they've got carpal tunnel syndrome and there's another test uh, that you can do if the you need to if further testing is necessary and it involves testing the nerve conduction uh, neurologists do this a lot neurologists I will do the nerve conductions. I've seen this done in neurology offices. All right, well, you've diagnosed it. Now, how do you treat it? There's sort of, it kind of goes down in, in terms of severity. The, the, the first thing, of course, try to uh, help them um, uh, relieve some of that tension or, or, or compression or stress on the median nerve. And that is done with a wrist splint. And wrist splints are available uh, at any pharmacy they're, they're very widely used people use them all the time people can use them at their job and um, it can help alleviate a lot of these symptoms uh, the next thing that they uh, can sometimes do is the steroid injections and the steroid injections are uh, it, it's a mixture of steroid and anesthetic that's in, in, injected into the carpal tunnel and it alleviates the pain and then finally if all this doesn't help sometimes you can alleviate the alleviate uh, the compression uh, of the on the median nerve surgically all right but that's definitely not a first uh, choice that's after you've tried everything and everything has failed and finally I'll end off with a clinical vignette so here we go 45 year old man visits his doctor after his friend who has not seen him for years notices a change in his appearance overgrowth of his frontal bones and enlargement of his hands and feet have occurred patient complains of a tingling sensation in the first second and third digits of the right hand and loss of coordination and strength of the right thumb which of the following has most likely been affected well before i jump into these nerves do you recognize what condition this person might have? I'm not talking about carpal tunnel syndrome. I'm talking about what condition has he developed that's causing the carpal tunnel syndrome. Well, that condition is acromegaly. Yeah, that's why in earlier in the presentation I drew two lines to it. Uh, he's got enlargement of his hands. He's uh, basically developed acromegaly that is causing this carpal tunnel syndrome. And that's very, very important. Do you see how these clinical vignettes kind of uh, uh, talk about things that are associated with uh, carpal tunnel syndrome? And then the, the question is asking which nerve? And, well, it's right here, median nerve. So the answer is B.